It was an infected USB stick just like this that unleashed the world's most infamous cyber attack. The manufacturing industry is the number one target of cyber threats. In this episode of Smarter Shop, we're gonna teach you simple, low-cost solutions to protect you from cyber attacks. My name is Ryan Kelly. I'm a manufacturing and supply chain technologist for AMT. My job is to get tech into industry faster. Today, we're solving manufacturing challenges with bite-sized solutions. Give us 10 minutes and we'll give you a smarter shop. Laura, let's talk about USBs and other removable media. USBs are a pretty common way that people would move information, move data, move files around the shop. I'm sure our audience is gonna to wanna to learn how to protect themselves. Well, what about malware spreading across the network? I mean, that's what happened with the Stuxnet virus when over 5,000 centrifuges spun so fast that they blew themselves apart. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't wanna see that happen to your CNC machine. Yeah, correct, and removable media is a very common way to bring files from the engineering work desks and design desks into equipment on the floor. And there are a lot of different mechanisms in order to protect them. Here at MXD, we actually created one mechanism to protect that on our 3D printer. You can see this lock here. This is actually a 3D printed lock that our designers designed and attached to the 3D printer. When it's engaged, it covers up the SD card. However, I have a key which is under control and I am able to gain access to it so very simple solution and less than $10. That's awesome, but couldn't we use encrypted USB sticks as well? Yeah, encrypted USBs are a great way of keeping those files in transit, um, secure. However, a lot of older and legacy equipment, they don't read those encrypted USBs very well. So we have a pretty slick way of doing it here, very inexpensive and able to be manufactured within a job shop. We're gonna go over to our cyber wall where Drew, another one of our senior integration engineers, is gonna show us a different method for protecting these types of ports. Let's check it out. Hey Drew. Hey Adam. Hey Drew. Hey Ryan. Welcome to our cyber wall. Thank you, what are we looking at here? So this is a demonstration that we've put together to really highlight what cybersecurity looks like for an average shop. So up here we have a very representative setup for a shop. We have a couple of PLCs running some pneumatics that is representative of any process, process control that you've got running in your shop. We've got a couple of networks uh, on the right and left side, we have slight differences between them to show a protected side versus an unprotected side to show what can happen when a cyber attack hits one or the other. So in this instance, we like to really highlight some software applications you can use on your shop to help protect things like USB ports. So in this case, we have application allow listing software installed on the protected side that allows you to protect your network against any malicious software or even just unknown software that might try to run. So if I have unknown or malicious software on this USB, if I'd go in and try to plug it in, then you'll see that nothing is currently running and we'll even get a notification to pop up to say if something was attempted to run. So what you're saying is that the, the malware would take the form of some kind of application. The allow list software says only allowed applications will run. And this that just popped up is a list of the malware that basically says, here's some applications that we don't recognize that we think are bad, we're not gonna allow those. Absolutely, because none of these software executable files were on our allow list, they're not allowed to run. Seems smart. That's great. However, what if we, you know, for a smaller job shop, they don't have an IT department. Is this software readily available? Is it cost effective? Luckily, this software is readily available. There's a number of different solutions on the market. It's easy to obtain, and you don't need to be an IT specialist to install it. So if you were to try to take the same USB and plug it in on our unprotected side, you can actually see what kind of havoc it might wreak. Oh my gosh. Nice, Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, that looks like it could ruin your day. 
and this would be easily prevented if you had something as simple as the allow listing software. Very cool. It's a bad day in the shop. How do you make it stop? <laughs> So far, we've seen a lot of different methodologies used in the manufacturing environment. So on our last stop today, we're going to come to a special use environment that we call our DOD simulated environment. This goes beyond CMMC level one, but it demonstrates how a lot of these techniques, straightforward, simple techniques can be used together in order to create a higher level of security for those environments that need that. So why don't we go ahead and scan in? Okay. Uh, it's not working for me. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. This is actually one of the first things we talked earlier that some environments within the facility need special authorization. So this is one of those environments, so. Okay. So I'll have Sam, our lead cybersecurity engineer, walk you through some of the additional controls we have in our environment. Hey, Sam. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Sam, pleasure to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, Adam. So welcome to the MXD Cyber Bunker. Now that we're in here, this is a more secure area, but it actually doesn't adhere to the same safety standards as the factory floor, so you can go ahead and remove those goggles. Great. Oh, great. So we wanted to bring you in here, though, and show you that not only do we have the physical security when you first came into the room where your badge did work, but then when you tried to enter this room, you couldn't. And that's because this room is locked down to a more secure access list of only people who need to be in here working on the project that we're working on. So that makes sense for you know DOD applications, but uh, Adam, what are some other reasons that you might want to have an additional layer of physical security in a normal job shop setting? Well, in the Boston Technology Center, we have a powdered metal 3D printer, and within that room is another room where we store all of our powder, and that is restricted only for shop staff. So you've got a, a heightened degree of physical security here. Do you have some additional digital security here as well? Yeah, we do actually. So this whole project was set up to add a additive manufacturing process into DOD environments. And with the added physical security, we also have extra cyber security in the way of multi-factor authentication. And let me show you guys that. All right, Sam, what are we looking at here? Well, I just booted up the PC and I wanted to show you guys that we actually incorporated BitLocker into this system so that the entire hard drive is actually encrypted. So if this box would ever walk out of here or the hard drive was to get misplaced, none of the data that we have on this system would actually be readable without the BitLocker pin that we've set up. That's great, Sam, but is this BitLocker something that's native to the operating system? It is, it's actually built into Windows Pro. So let me go ahead and show you guys getting through BitLocker, and this is something that you need to know to get into the system. So you log in your PIN at BitLocker, that then gives you access to... So that goes ahead and unencrypts the whole drive, and then we can finally get to the operating system to actually get at the data we need to get at. Okay, and what happens now? So now we're actually presented with the Windows login screen. So if I go to log in, I wanted to show you guys, because this is a simulated DoD environment, we actually use the Department of Defense's warning statement to show that this system uh, has proprietary or confidential information that the government uses and that it's their information, it's monitored, and that you don't have a lot of privacy rights. From there we go to log in and this is where we get to our multi-factor authentication. We don't even present you with the username that you can use on this box. You have to know that before you can get on the system. You also have to know what the corresponding password is for that username to get in. And then on top of those things that you need to know, we also have something that you need to have, and that's a credential on a USB token that we can insert here, and that'll allow us to log in. Wow, okay, so this is pretty secure, but it doesn't sound like anything is particularly high cost. No, first of all, setting usernames and passwords in Microsoft is everyone's been doing, but these tokens can be found from various vendors for a very minimal cost. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm glad I could show you guys a little bit about multi-factor authentication. And as much as I'd like to spend more time with you, I do have to get back to some sensitive work. So I'm going to have to kick you out. All right, Sam. Well, thanks so much for the valuable lessons. Absolutely, Ryan. Thanks, Sam. Much appreciate, appreciate it. Well, Laura, we learned some really valuable skills here today. Best of all, it doesn't look like anything's particularly expensive. A lot of the stuff is sort of built into systems that manufacturers are already using today. But where would you recommend that someone get started? MXD recommends that manufacturers start with an assessment of their environment. 
We have a tool available on our website called the Cyber Marketplace, where manufacturers can sign up and go through a simple assessment against frameworks such as the CMMC Level 1 or Level 2 if they have interest in that area, or then the cybersecurity framework. And is that a free tool? It is. It's freely available. You can sign up and go through the assessment, and it'll help identify those gaps, which gives a great place to start. That's great, Laura. It seems like these cybersecurity tools that we've talked about today are attainable just about any level manufacturer out there. Exactly. And by design, we want to make sure that the resources that manufacturers have are low resource, low cost, readily accessible, and easy to implement. Terrific. Well, with that, thank you so much for taking the time to host Smarter Shop. Thank Please you. Appreciate. It's been a pleasure having you. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Thanks. This is actually one of the first things we talked earlier that some environments within the facility need special authorization. And this is one of those environments. 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 This is one of those environments.